Welcome back everybody to VTS Options. So I get questions all the time from people who want me to give feedback on some option strategy they came up with that essentially comes down to selling option premium on a specific time schedule. They'll ask me, well, what if I just sell iron condors every month? Maybe open them every 30 days to expiration and then close them when they hit seven days left. I'll just rinse and repeat on a schedule. Or they'll say, well, what if I just sell call spreads on VXX every week? Open them on Monday and they'll expire on Friday. Since the VXX does tend to go down over time, selling call spreads like clockwork should make a bunch of money, right? Well, that may sound good in theory, but unfortunately, no. To succeed at option trading, you have to understand that fundamentally the options market is very efficient. All the general public information out there, like for example, that the VXX does tend to go down over time, that's all priced into the options already. There's no such thing as free money. So in order to succeed, you need an actual edge beyond what the general public already knows. Doing anything blindly on a time schedule has zero expectation of profit. So I was scrolling through Twitter recently and I saw a particularly egregious tweet that highlights this point exactly which I'm going to go over today. And you've all been really awesome lately with smashing that like button for me, which I really do appreciate. So go ahead and give this video a like as well. And let's go over this potential disaster. So first, let's go over this tweet, which was intended to be a serious idea, but has inadvertently highlighted exactly what not to do when option trading. Selling a five days to expiration UVXY at the money straddle every Monday. No management, even through the biggest volatility spikes. And he says it would have turned a $600 profit for the year on a one lot trade size. So essentially just churning one contract of naked UVXY straddles every Monday, and then letting them expire on Friday, week in and week out. Now this is very far from the first time I've seen something like this. It's actually very common, and I just cringe every time I see it. Of course, I don't care at all if the person tweeting it wants to lose their money, that's fine. But there's new traders all over Twitter who actually do listen to bad advice like this. And unfortunately, they end up losing a lot of money before learning the lesson. So that's what I'm here for, to accelerate your learning process and hopefully help you avoid some of these very common mistakes. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you four reasons why this strategy, if you can even call it that, is a disaster waiting to happen. So the first reason why this strategy is so terrible, which I hope was screaming at you the second you read that tweet, is the possibility of catastrophic drawdowns, several multiples higher than the actual expected profit. So it's Monday now, and this is what the current at the money straddle expiring this Friday looks like. Now you can see down here, it's constructed by selling both a $19 call and a $19 put at the same time. That's what a short straddle is. Now because the UVXY is currently trading around $19, the margin requirement is only gonna be a few thousand dollars for this trade. And that number is important, so I'll get back to it. But you can see we've got break-even prices on the low side at around 17, and then on the high side around 21. Now the market's live right now, so this might be bouncing around a little bit. But you can see in the middle, it's showing a probability of success of about 41 1.77%, and then about 30% on the high side and 30% on the low side. Now in a perfect expiry right in the center of this trade, it's gonna make about $200. But realistically, a winning trade is gonna be somewhere between zero and $200 on both sides. So let's say the average win will be about $100. On a capital requirement of say 2,500, most of those easy wins will make about 4% on capital, give or take, that's it. Now hopefully you can see the problem here. It doesn't take much to see big losses as well in either direction. Even just going from 19 to about 23, or from 19 down to 15 or 16, you're already gonna lose more than double what the average win will make. And this is the UVXY we're talking about. Look at the percentages here. It can easily go up or down that much, and it often does. But that's not the worst part. Remember with long volatility products, and the UVXY is actually a 1.5 times leverage product, big volatility spikes are really gonna hurt. And this isn't the type of strategy that is strict with entries and exits. It's a constantly rolling, always allocated strategy, just week in and week out. That means it'll be subject to every single volatility spike the market has, both up and down indefinitely because it's always allocated. You're never gonna get lucky and be on the sidelines. You're gonna get hit with everything. So this is a three-year chart of the UVXY showing just the weekly bars, and you can see there's quite a few big ones. Of course, all the big green bars, like this one, this one, all of these ones here, of course, the pandemic green bars, all of those are really gonna hurt. But because this is a short straddle, and you can lose on either side of the trade, the big red bars are also going to cause major losses. Look at these two right there. There's several down here. This one here right after a spike. We call these volatility crush, and they're going to hurt the trade as well. 
The UVXY often sees larger moves, and in rare cases, it can go way more than that. Looking at our current straddle, losses could easily be three or four times higher than the wins. That's the old three steps forward and one giant step backwards pattern that new traders often fall into. But then, because this is a strategy that is always allocated, you will occasionally also get those really violent volatility moves. And that's where you could end up losing 10 or 15 times as much as your small wins. And who knows, maybe there's going to be a flash crash again, or God forbid, another terrorist attack. You could get hit with 20 times or more of the loss. With these leverage volatility ETFs, the sky is the limit. It's the type of strategy where you could be doing well for quite a while, maybe a year or longer, just a long string of easy wins. And then two or three bad weeks in a row and you've lost it all. People do go bankrupt doing these types of things. The vast majority of people on Twitter who are just pretending to be traders to gain followers, they're mostly just theorizing, they're paper trading, they're showing back tests of things they've never actually live traded. So of course on paper there's no emotion involved in taking huge steps backwards when you lose big. You just gloss over it and look at the final result of the test a year later. Oh, it made $600 that year, great, it's a profitable strategy, right? Well, in some years the terminal result at the end of the year might have been positive, but the drawdowns in between can be many multiples higher than that. And any trader with any experience at all knows that the psychology of risk tolerance and drawdowns is critical to long-term success. If drawdowns get too large, you will abandon the strategy at the low and lock in all your mass of losses. Because what kind of trader suffers a 60% drawdown and then wakes up the next day with confidence to keep going? A paper trader, right? Because in live trading, when you're down 60%, you're done. You pull the plug. There is no eventual recovery, no matter what the on-paper result shows. Psychologically, it's over. So when you see people talking about strategies that suffer drawdowns four to five times higher than the long-term profit, that's a huge red flag that perhaps they don't trade as much as they pretend to. The second major problem with this strategy, and this will be a very valuable lesson for you in your other trading as well, is the effect of capital requirements, margin requirement per trade that it has on long-term success. Again, people who don't live trade very much, they always overlook this aspect. When it's not live trading and you run out of margin because the market made a move against you, well, you just click your mouse button or you update your spreadsheet and give yourself more money and then you just keep going. But in live trading, fast changing capital requirements can absolutely tank your account. This is the same chart showing weekly bars for the UVXY. Now brokers do vary, but the capital requirement for a straddle when the price is in the lower range, that might only be a couple thousand dollars per contract. So you're basically trying to make about a hundred dollars for an easy win week on a few thousand reserved capital when losses could be many multiples higher. This is what we call picking up pennies in front of the steamroller, risking massive amounts of capital for very small profits along the way. Because when you get caught in one of these major volatility moves, not only are you losing massive amounts of money on your short straddles, but your margin requirements to hold a single contract may also dramatically rise. It could be several multiples higher a few weeks later. And sometimes as well, in the heart of a volatility spike, brokers may also raise the base level capital requirements for volatility specific instruments. That's not uncommon at all, they need to protect themselves as well. You see how bad of a situation this is? At the worst possible time when you're taking the most losses in your strategy, that's when you're faced with the higher capital requirements to keep going. Where are you going to get the money from? Liquidate other positions in your portfolio? Or maybe take out a second mortgage on your house? Just kidding, don't do that. But on paper, you just look at the end result and not even worry about margin requirements. You just say, oh, well, here's what happened on a rolling one contract size. It made $600. That's the final conclusion. But absolutely no consideration for what a nightmare it is to manage this strategy during the worst times for your losses. Your net liquidation account value goes down strongly, meaning buying power goes way down, and your margin requirement per trade goes up substantially. This is a recipe for disaster, and you'll be forced out of the strategy at the one time you most want to keep going to try to make your money back. The third reason this strategy is bad, and this is a pretty short one to cover, but very important nonetheless, is what's the actual long-term rate of return here? Is it even good? Let's just assume that the numbers from the tweet are accurate and it did in fact make $600 after a year. Okay, but how is that good? We've already shown that even in the best of times, you'd need a few thousand dollars to run this. But you also have to account for the margin disaster that's waiting for you when volatility spikes, because it will spike. You'll need the reserved capital then to defend the position. So let's just be generous and say you reserved $5,000. It'll probably be more than that, but let's just say $5,000 is enough to sell one contract indefinitely and defend it whenever it goes really badly. Well, a $600 profit on $5,000 of reserved capital, that's only a 12% rate of return. 
and it suffered a 60% mid-year drawdown. So balancing the radically changing margin requirements and suffering a 60% mid-year drawdown that would make any rational investor quit the strategy to eventually just make a 12% rate of return, and that's somehow good. I think we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. For me personally, that's one of the worst risk-reward ratios I can imagine. Again, though, most people who talk about just blindly selling option premium, they very often forget to take this into account. Now, there's several other reasons why this strategy won't work long term. We could easily get into Monte Carlo and risk of ruin simulations, which are all but guaranteed. But let's just do one more simple one. The final reason this strategy sucks is that even if you wanted to use stop losses to manage some of the risk, they don't work on these types of strategies. It's very common to see people who talk about these very high risk strategies and just nonchalantly say that they can use stop losses, like somehow that fixes the problem. I know on paper it fixes the problem. You can just say, well, I would have stopped out at 10% or 20%, but in live trading, it's basically a moot point. There's many times where it simply won't work. The first reason is that the vast majority of market movement happens overnight. You've probably seen a few different visuals showing this, but virtually all the movement, both up and down, is happening when we're asleep. We call this overnight gap risk, and that's really the danger for anyone with sensitive option trades. For short straddles specifically, they lose money whether the market goes up or down, so any type of overnight gap risk is really going to be costly. If you're relying on stop losses to get you out of any bad positions, you're going to be in a world of hurt when you realize that the damage is already done before you can do anything about it. The second reason is because these are very short dated option contracts. We're talking about anywhere from one to five days. With short dated options like these, the delta and gamma are so sensitive that any major moves in the underline are going to show up immediately and violently in the price of the options. It's very difficult to mitigate damage on short dated, highly sensitive options. And in a practical sense, stop losses just won't work. If you get a flash crash when you're short a one to five day option contract, all you can really do is watch your money go down the drain. The bottom line is, and as the thumbnail for this video said, don't do this. You're risking massive drawdowns, fast changing margin requirements, and ineffectiveness of risk management. And if you do happen to juggle all of those things, remember in the long run, it's still going to be a low rate of return in relation to the reserved capital. Again, most traders who are talking about these strategies conceptually and not actually live trading them, they overlook all of these things. They see the start, and the finish, and all of that middle ground of drawdowns and capital requirements and trader psychology, it just gets swept under the rug. So if you see things on social media that you're curious about, don't be afraid to reach out to me and I will give you my honest assessment of its viability. This one we talked about today is a total dud. So if you wanna learn how to trade options safely and profitably, you can claim your free trial on my website and join the VTS community. You're always welcome. Thanks for watching. So if you're interested in options trading, go claim your free two-week trial on my website. In that time frame, you'll definitely see a wide variety of trade types. Iron condors, strangles, calendars, earnings plays, pairs trading. I have many profitable strategies that you'll be interested in. Come join the VTS community.